Here's an example of an extracapsular cataract extraction that uh, was done by Dr. Colder uh, in the late 80s. You can see at this point we would bend our own cystotomes. This is a 27 gauge needle. And Dr. Colder is bending it uh, himself uh, to allow him to do the capsulorexis. These are bloaty scissors, which are sharp Westcott's that he's using to perform the pyridomy, uh, which is done with a cord length of about 11 or 12 millimeters. Now he's using the gill knife to clean up some residual episcleral and conjunctival tissue. Bipolar electrocautery is used to achieve hemostasis. Remember that it's important to have a spark gap for that to work. 75 blade is used to make an initial opening into the eye that will allow a can opener capsulorexis. Here you can see he's going all the way across with the cystotome. And it's a little difficult to see here. Um, uh, actually, that was uh, Helon, but here he's going across with the cystotome. You can see he's, he's making the can opener move where you enter and then go over to where you entered before. And you do this around 360 degrees. Now with Kelman forceps, he's grabbing the capsule and pulling it free and pulling it out with all the perforations that were made with the can opener. Now with the cystotome, he's rocking the lens free. No hydrodissection is done. Uh, with Dr. Colder's extra cap technique, he's rocking the lens free. And the last motion is to put the lens up and rock it up such that it's ready to come out through the wound. Now this small little section that was uh, opened up for the uh, rocking of the lens and for the capsulorexis is uh, extended using uh, what are called Castro Viejo scissors. And here's the Castro Viejo scissors are used um, going in one direction. Uh, here a safety suture is placed uh, using 70 Vicryl. And this safety suture would allow you to quickly close the eye should you have a choroidal hemorrhage. Now you can see the uh, muscle hook is used 180 degrees across from the wound. And a 0 0.2 forceps is used to push the posterior aspect of the wound more posterior and allows expression of this dense nucleus. Now the residual um, cortical material is removed after closing this one safety suture. A couple of additional uh, 70 vicryl sutures are placed uh, to allow closure of the eye during the uh, irrigation aspiration. Here irrigation aspiration is used to remove residual cortical material. You can see how the pupil came down uh, following expression of the nucleus, which was not uncommon when performing an extra cap. So the people got a little bit bigger during this, uh, probably because of the epinephrine and the fluid. Uh, but the um, residual cortical material was removed. It's tricky to do the cortical material with the extra cap because you don't have a nicely defined anterior capsular edge. You have a bunch of little tags left over when you do the um, can opener. Here you can see Dr. Colder's doing this two-handed technique, which is very difficult. Uh, he had such excellent hands, but it's very hard to do this. Uh, but he's using the uh, Kugelin hook to expose some subincisional material here. This is uh, an olive tip polisher. We so I sometimes call, call this the Johnson polisher after Dr. Tim Johnson, who uses this. Now we're um, just making sure uh, that the um, sutures are out of the way and that there's no um, material uh, in the wound. Some uh, viscoelastic is placed, probably a cohesive viscoelastic like Helon is placed uh, in the capsular bag. This is an SK21 lens, which is an interesting PMMA lens that Dr. Colder liked that has uh, haptics uh, which are made of uh, a proline. And so uh, this is a, a lens which uh, he commonly used. I still see a lot of patients that have had this lens placed that are very happy with nicely centered lenses. Uh, the lens has four positioning holes uh, which um, are, were useful to get the lens in uh, just the right position. 
unfortunately, the positioning hole sometimes uh, would get um, in the way if the lens decentered. So positioning holes are sort of uh, out of vogue now. See, Dr. Colder is again using a two-handed technique to gently place this uh, into the uh, capsular bag. Now he's using these uh, two hooks. And with the two hooks, you can, you can um, dial this lens. And, and this takes a lot of coordination to use the two hooks like this. But he would dial the lens uh, in an attempt to, to get the haptics uh, into the bag. One of the things that was hard with the extra cap was to get both haptics uh, into the bag because, again, the anterior capsule was not very well defined. Here, Dr. Kohler does this nice closure with a running 10-0. Some residual viscoelastic material is removed. And then this 10 running nylon uh, suture is closed. So a beautiful example of an extra cap that was planned.